Welcome everyone. Welcome to the final pitch day for the February Leaders in Innovation Fellowships uh, program. I'm delighted to welcome you here to the home of the Royal Academy of Engineering here at F Prince Philip House. I've got a few um, introductions to, to, uh, to you all to make, but firstly, I just want to talk you through what we're expecting from you today. As you will have no doubt experienced over the last two weeks, we have challenged you, we have mentored you, we have given you new coaching and ideas to develop a business proposition, to work out your intellectual property position, to work out your sales and marketing strategy, your financial strategy, You've had chances to meet with each other, to develop your pitches. You've had a chance to see how the innovation ecosystem here in London and the rest of the UK is developed. In short, we've thrown a lot at you. All of which is leading up to today, where you get a chance to show us how fantastic your propositions really are. You get the chance over the next three minutes of your time to tell our panel of esteemed judges exactly how good your innovation is and how much difference it'll make to the country that you represent. So first, let me introduce you to those judges. Now, some of you may be familiar with them already. You certainly will have met uh, Sarah. But I'd just like to take an opportunity um, to advance the slide and to show you the rest of the judges we have for you. Our judges will briefly introduce themselves, but for today, these judges are a panel of seasoned investors. They are potential CEOs for your business. They represent potential partners for your proposition. They are there for you to make your ask clear what you want them to help develop your project. So, first of all, let me introduce you to your head judge for this room, Norman Astley. Microphone. Um, hi, my name is Tim Hingas. Uh, I work at Tech UK as a manager for International Trade Program. Uh, Tech UK is the largest trade body for the technology industry in the UK. We represent just under a thousand companies. We never employ uh, over half of the technology positions in the UK. Um, at International Trade Program, we look at the at helping companies expand internationally looking at the vice versa process, how do we help companies come to the UK, uh, expand their presence here, grow, scale up, and it's also work on policy areas, how do we make these two things easier. Uh, before Tech UK, uh, I used to work at a uh, consultancy, uh, helping companies expand into uh, Southeast Asia region, so companies from uh, US, companies from Europe, helping them with uh, distribution channels, strategy. It's a short introduction. Thanks. And I'm Sarah, and I think you all know me already. You certainly know what I look like when I'm concentrating very hard on listening to what people are saying. Thank you, Tim. 
Um, and I suppose my main interest, because you, you've heard about my background, is in how innovation, how technological change can ensure that we actually deliver a circular economy and maybe have a planet that we can still live on 20, 30 years from now. That's my main interest, so I'm looking forward to these presentations. Thank you, judges. Okay, so a few more introductions to the people in the room, just so that you're comfortable with how the day is going to run. Yeah, okay. I've got one. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, fellows, when you come to, to pitch, there's a lovely pink cross here for you to stand on. Uh, directly in your line of sight, we have a timekeeper. To introduce yourself, uh, the timekeeper today is... David Gould, and David has some little flashcards on him, and he'll give you a warning as your time is counting down. And to demonstrate ably, he'll give you a one-minute warning, a 30-second warning, and finally, a finish. I'll then allow you... There you go. <laughs> Ooh, hand movements as well. Fantastic. Thank you, David. Obviously, the rather training has come in very handy for you. Excellent. Um, I'll then give you a chance to finish the sentence you're on before we bring you to a close. And that really represents you know, how pitches work um, in real life. So just giving you a sense of a reality check here. OK, otherwise in the room we have uh, my colleague, Steve Cleverly, who's going to be operating all of your slides. Oop. And that reminds me, uh, technology. <laughs> So uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the keenly observant of you will notice there's a little tiny little video camera in the back of the room. Uh, this is for your own personal development, as you will all be filmed, but also we are broadcasting live to the world. We have a panel of people dialing into our YouTube stream, uh, representing uh, innovators and, and uh, in partner countries from the 16 uh, Newton Fund partner countries who have been invited to, to watch your pitches. Um, so, when you're speaking, you're addressing the judges, but you'll be looking at the camera. Okay, what else do we need to do? Uh, in the room as well, we have a helper. Ellen, hi. Ellen, hi. So, hi to Ellen, uh, just to make sure that today it runs smoothly. But I think we need to get on with the pitches. So, the rules are simple. You have three minutes to present your brilliant ideas to this panel of judges, to your, the rest of your, your cohort, and to the world via the YouTube stream. And with that, I think we should get on with it. Let's see what else is on the slides, make sure I haven't forgotten anything before I, we clear up. There we go. Before we queue up the first people. The way this will work is I'll introduce the next person to speak to come up, and also with the next person also go to the AV department over there, Steve and our lovely helper there, um, to get themselves mic'd up. So I'll be calling up the person who's about to pitch, which is Atid Aditya. Please excuse my pronunciations. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> um, uh, and also I'd like to call up to get mic'd up to come on next, Amol as well. Number three, Anupam could also get themselves ready. Then we'll be ready to start. Okay, so let's get this pitching day started. So we'd like to welcome to the stage, first up, representing India, Atija. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aditya Deshpande, and I'm representing Magway Energy Recovery Systems from India. So something as simple as clean air has become a rare natural resource for us in our cities these days. It is estimated that just in the UK, 40,000 people die premature deaths because of vehicle emissions. And it is costing the NHS a whooping six billion pounds. Now the government is acting on this and introducing electric and hybrid vehicles, but the technology limitations are hampering its adoption. Now, a recent study also found out that it's cheaper to operate diesel vehicles than electric or hybrids. One of the solutions to this problem is kinetic energy recovery systems, which help increase the overall efficiency of your vehicle. But the existing solutions have complex mechanisms in it, have too many moving parts, are therefore less efficient. 
We at Magma Energy Recovery Systems have come up with a new technology that uses just two moving parts to power the generator, which is our suspension energy recovery system. It, what this means is, as your vehicle moves, it recharges itself, thereby increasing efficiency of the vehicle. One of the primary benefits of using our system is increased vehicle range by 10%. And we have secondary benefits, which include cost savings, which when applied to, as an example, to the Transport for London existing fleet, can save us pound 2.5 million annually. There is savings in terms of charging time, which is 225 hours per bus per year. We have reduced carbon emissions as well. Plus, we have societal benefits improved health in people, reduction in death rates, plus reduced burden on the healthcare system itself. Now, we plan to license our technology in the electric commercial vehicle segment globally, which is stated to grow at 40% and is going to hit nearly 2 million units by end of 2025. Motorsports is another area we wish to harness to create awareness about our technology and the company itself. As a company, we have got a national patent, a PCT, have won three major awards, and are currently pilot testing for a dollar 5.7 billion fleet company. What we wish is to have a collaboration with the technology development partner who will help us move from our current stage prototype to implementation phase. And we also re realize that we require 215,000 US dollars to realize this dream. We request you to join us in creating a better world. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. That was really, really interesting. Um, and I suppose I'm specifically interested in, in what kind of technology development partner you're looking to get into bed with, as it were, mm -hmm. um, in that it, it, it's a complex sector. And to mm -hmm. get into the market is not necessarily easy. And there is a lot of competition. Yes, there is. Uh, somebody who's just a technology development uh, expert. Like, we have R&D centers, R&D specific companies, and we want to collaborate with them, just develop the technology. We are not looking to get into manufacturing ourselves. Thanks, very interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, one of the questions I would have is, uh, what do you see as the principal risks uh, to your business? Uh, competition. There is a braking energy recovery system, one of the major competitions that we have, and development of heat recovery systems. That is also a major competition that we have. Uh, risk in terms would be how people would adopt or how the manufacturers would adopt our system into their vehicles because uh, suspension hasn't changed in a long time. Now, to change that mindset would definitely take us some time to see the benefits and to move ahead in that. Thank you very much. Um, as you were presenting, that's what I was thinking about, the manufacturing of the technology. So I wondered that, w how are you actually going to persuade a, a strategic partner in technology development that mm -hmm. they should partner with you? We'll show them the benefits. Uh, that is the, one of the most important things that we're going to do. Uh, because there was a time when other energy recovery systems also faced a backlash. Now, it's, there is generally uh, a more receptive approach to things. Uh, like if I take breaking energy recovery systems, one, once upon a time it was banned in Formula One, for example. Now, people are more receptive to hybridization. And everybody, I think all the governments in all countries are understanding how important hybridization and electrification is. That is the future of technology. So everybody is moving towards that. And we will align ourselves and show them how we can work together and make it a mutually beneficial partnership. Thank you for all that, and thank you for an excellent presentation. Now, you, you came to Ingna for these two weeks. You, do you know that uh, Ingna is the home of many Formula One companies? Yes, I do. Have you arranged to see any of them? Yes, we are reaching to a couple of them. Uh, with the help of our mentors, we have approached uh, three companies already. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to our first present presenter, to Aditya. Thank you very much for, your, for kicking us off in such fine style. Uh, David, are we timing the, the questions as well, just to keep an eye on the judges as well as our fellows? Thanks, Thanks mate. That would be Thank fantastic. You, 
We need to make sure that these, uh, these esteemed judges stick to time as well as our fellows do. Okay, so uh, can I make sure that Anupam is mic'd up, ready for the next one? Okay. I'd like to call to the stage Amol Chapyaka. Good morning, change makers. Imagine that you have to wear this mask every time you go outdoors. And while we're imagining over here, there are n number of cities and people who have to do it as a necessity to protect their health. And especially those young souls or young lungs which are still developing and which is our future generation. Yes, I'm talking about outdoor air pollution. To back my facts and figures, uh, I have a report by WHO, which typically talks about uh, the number of deaths due to outdoor air pollution. Can I take a break if it is? I can, can you please pause it, I mean, because this is an important one. Uh, that's good, yeah, I'll give the continuity. Good morning, change makers. I'm Amul, and I'm here to talk about outdoor air pollution. And I talked where we are very dreadful about wearing this mask every time we go outdoors, and there are still a number of people who are working on that. There's a report by WHO which talks about 4.2 million deaths every year due to outdoor air pollution. And over here, we can see what are the current efforts that are being taken. We are taking care of tree plantation, adaptation of renewable energy sources, and stopping it at source. But believe me, this is, or we all know that it is not sufficient enough to take care of the entire problem. Let's see what our solution is. We're talking about a unit which we developed in 2016 and filed patents for it, where the polluted air is taken as inlet. It's locally filtered through a patented system, and then fresh air is released back. The best part of it is we install these units for free at public places. We'll go to see how we do it. Quick tech specs, it covers a region of 60 feet radius. And uh, it can filter around three such rooms in a minute. That's the capacity of the smallest unit. Now, this is the amount of air pollution which is captured in just 30 days. And if it is not in here, it is in someone's lungs. We also take care of odor, petroleum, fumes, and gases, because these filters are chemically infused filters, which helps us take care of it. Now, let's compare it to the trees, where trees can take care of CO2. And we complement a tree by taking care of the other polluting elements of the environment. These are the areas where we typically install the units, at residential complexes, commercial complexes, educational societies. Fuel stations are typically where we are putting in more units. The channel that we have approached is a franchisee model. The location maps that you're seeing, tags which you're seeing, are where we are existingly having a presence. And we're looking for more presence in different areas. The traction that we have got, here some images and some media coverages where you can see the machines installed at public places and some of the units which are there on the paper slides. We got some awards. Uh, NASCOM is an equivalent of Tech UK back in India. So we got an award of social innovation over there. We're talking about these installations majorly in India. Abroad also we have some installations, 300 units installed, 4,500 units in execution. 
and 8,500 units is an immediate pipeline. As an impact that we have caused till date, we, have, we are covering three Wembley stadiums every minute across the world in nine cities. And we have got an outreach in five countries as on date. On 18th of February this month, we received the first order from UK. We are registered in UK now. Our ask is we are looking for regional partners for having a faster market penetration. The questions, I guess, have some time remaining. I'll just touch upon the unit that you're seeing over here, which is the future, where it's about installation of units on a vehicle instead of stationary units. I thank you for this, and we are doing it for the future generation and our generation too. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for dealing with the interesting situation. Thank, yeah. You did that really well. Um, and you're obviously making inroads right. across the world. I, I guess mine is a bit more of a technical question right. in terms of the effectiveness True. compared to no filter. Correct. So um, there are three tests that we conduct on the unit. The first test is inlet to outlet test. And these tests have been certified by national laboratories across India, Nepal, Maldives, and um, UK, we have already submitted the paper. Um, that's about the inlet to outlet. Second is, you saw the filter which was clogged with the uh, material. So we typically do a grammage test, how many grams has been checked in. And every first installation in a country, we do a pilot report of 25 pages, which gives the exact impact of that. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, great presentation. Um, I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about the um, unit economics. So right. what are they? Right. So as I told you that the units are installed for free, there is a display board on top of it. Now, we prefer not to sell the units, but to earn through the displays because it is a long-term revenue for us instead of making a 20-30% revenue at one go. So on an average, we receive between 70 pounds to 150 pounds per machine uh, on a monthly basis. That covers the capital cost within six to eight months for us. And further than that is what we earn out of it. It's a, it's a model that we have evolved, and it's paying us really well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you already have very many of these units across capital cities right. and so on, and you have uh, partners right. in those countries. True. So, but your ask is for more partners. Right. So I wondered what you see as the obstacles mm -hmm. that you have to overcome in order to secure more partnerships. Right. So uh, one is where we talk about a new country or a new region. There are two barriers, which are one is language, and the second one is the regional connections, which we're taking it as a positive side, because if we connect with the right person with the right contacts and the language advantage, it is helping us in a way. It can be a barrier or it can be a boon, because if we try to individually go in that region, it's going to be tough for us. That's why we're partnering in you know, any very well way. Yeah. Thank you very much for right. an excellent presentation. You were very specific about your model for growth being franchise. Right. How did you come to that decision? Uh, we are a startup company, and it becomes very difficult for us to actually deploy our own manpower. That requires a lot of money, and that also requires a lot of uh, human resource handling. For a startup, it is difficult. But what happens is that we are accessing the resources of the franchisee in terms of connections, manpower, and money, so that we can utilize that in a way to move faster and team up. So it's basically about. Uh, a scenario where we are talking about, we are not selling a product, we are selling an ecosystem in here, where all the stakeholders are benefited, and we are ensuring that, making sure all stakeholders benefited, public at large is being benefited most. So we've got municipal corporations getting free installations, our partners getting good revenues. Investors, we have been consistently giving 32% IRR till date. We are only diluted to 3% as on date, but uh, that's what we are doing. So we are going together as an ecosystem and not as a product. And just to finish up, uh, these two things, vehicle-mounted units, our, our aim is, let's see, all future vehicles should clean the air, and we have building panels. All buildings will act as air purifier. Imagine a future of that kind, and then we're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Amal. OK, so could. Abhim Manu, get himself mic'd up for the next presentation. And to uh, present his project, I'd like to welcome Anupam Lavania.
Traumatic brain injuries. Or people also know it as a bang in the head. Something as simple as that. This is an article from newspaper, a leading newspaper in India. Every minute, three people are, are reporting a cases of traumatic brain injury or brain hemorrhage in India alone. The numbers can keep on rising as we go forward. The, the problem is not the people die. Because of this traumatic brain injury, people die not because of lack of treatment or the facilities or the medication. People die because there's a delay in diagnosis. So if we can diagnose it in time, we can save a lot of lives and a lot of people from getting disabled. It also happens because people go for a diagnosis or go to a hospital only when the symptoms are severe. But by, by the time the symptoms are severe, the damage is already done. So we want to catch them before the symptoms get severe. That is in the first hour of the injury. That is also known as the golden period. But currently, because there are CT scan and MRI is the only way of diagnosing, of, of the diagnosis of this disease, and people have to travel all the way there. So a, a solution that I propose here, and that, that's the device that we've developed, it's a handheld device, which is totally non-invasive, it's affordable, and has very low radiations. This is what it looks like. So we've developed this device. It's an award-winning device. We have won awards across the, across the globe for this. This is a handheld device which can be used even by a layman only with a training of five minutes, let's say. And it's totally uh, interpretative. It does not need any inter interpretation by a medical uh, doctor or anybody. Of course, as a revenue model, we also uh, sell the disposables to prevent any kind of contamination from one patient to other. Uh, so far, we have developed the product, we have done uh, clinical validation, we have, we have been, I'm proud to say that we have successfully detected 100% of the hemorrhages. Our team comprises of medical doctors, embedded engineers, clinic, clinical analysts, and everybody from across the globe. Market definitely is huge. We're dividing a market into primary and secondary phases. The first one being injured, for injured people, second, where the injury is likely to happen. We have got uh, a strong interest from various hospitals across India and also uh, Israel. What I'm looking for is uh, investment of one million or a partnership to take care of the same. Basically where this money goes is in the manufacturing, clinical validation, regulatory compliances, and of course marketing and sales. So let's save some lives and let's get, prevent people from getting disabled anymore. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, fascinating. Thank you so much. Um, what do you see in particular as the challenges of getting into, let's say, the Indian market? And what are the different challenges in other markets? So in Indian market, the challenges that we have actually faced already is people are a little risk averse. They are not adaptive to new devices. However, because we have our onboard uh, HOD, uh, H head of the Department of Neurosurgery Department. So we have overcome that uh, obstacle there. And accordingly, uh, let's say talk about Europe and UK market, we want to partner with local hospitals or local agencies, and of course the notified bodies to uh, get more confidence of people. That is a, that's the main thing, man. Thank you. Thanks. Um, from my side, I'd be interested to hear a bit more about, um, compared to your compet competition, how do you uh, compare with respect to price, features, sure. um, performance? Is, is there a competition for the product? Oh, definitely. There is a competition. So uh, there is a company called Infrascanner, which has done this. But that, they have done it only for US defense, because it's extremely expensive. The device that Infrascanner has built costs about 10 times of my device. And even the scanning per every scan cost, per scan cost is also much higher than what we they charge. Because the technology is different, and we have uh, some patents in our name for that. Yeah. Thank you. Could you tell me um, what you've done so far in terms of uh, contact with the regulatory regimes around medical devices? Sure, ma'am. So in India, we have direct regulatory authority of India, which is controlled by Director General. So we have approached them and asked them that what are the regulations that we have to go through? What are the mandatory ones and what are the voluntary ones? 
The mandatory ones, they have said that this is not a notified device because of the power of the lasers that you're using. So we are clear from that, which means we got to go ahead. <laughs> uh, talking about the voluntary ones, we are already in process of getting ISO 13485 as well as the um, C certification. We are, we are working on those. We are almost halfway there, so the paperwork is going on, and let's say three, four months we should be there, hopefully. So. Hi. Again, wonderful presentation. I noticed that you have a partnership with Qualcomm. Is that Qualcomm, main Qualcomm, or is that Qualcomm Life? There's a Qualcomm India office, ah, okay. which is, uh, it's the same Qualcomm, which, which makes processor for all the mobile phones, the same Qualcomm. It's, yes, but it has a subsidiary for healthcare. Yes, they are now getting into healthcare. So yes. I, 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 or sorry, you partnered with them as well. Yes. Well, I wondered then, uh, you know, things like the defibrillator that yes. will pass through this yes. process. Are you looking at any of that to learn lessons for how to distribute? Uh, yes, uh, defibrillators, actually that has penetrated Indian market, uh, especially for public places like uh, theaters or airports. So they are already there, at least in Indian market, I can tell. So we are going that road also. In fact, uh, it's three days back that my team members, while I was here, they had a meeting with the uh, airport authorities of India to bring it also into their pr protocol. So uh, we are working on that as well, but that is going on parallelly, so yes. Well, I was thinking more of the companies that are that are making and selling these devices rather than the medics and, and the, the end user. So the companies that are into this? Yes, uh, so we are talking to Philips already. So they are, they are into this, so we're talking to Philips, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, right, if I can call uh, Chin Maya to get themselves mic'd up. Excellent. Okay. Our next presentation is from Abhim Anyu Singh. So please welcome Abhim Anyu. Good morning, all of you. I am Abhim Anyu Singh for Team Expressions. Globally, over 1.1 billion people need a home. They're homeless. Housing affordability crisis is one of the biggest challenges the world is facing today. And we are helping them by providing affordable, fast, modular and sustainable homes, how? So we have a patent pending te technique, that's a construction technique by using a new age raw material, which is called composite paper honeycomb panels. These panels are made up of honeycomb core, that's from the recycled paper, and sandwiched between cement fiber boards. You can see the sample over there. So basically we are, we are giving you an end-to-end -end solution, which will consist of the material, handling instructions, our team will come and they will assemble a home for you within two weeks. So what are the USPs? It is ultra lightweight, it is acoustical, it is insulative, it's fireproof, it's 100% recyclable. So this is the only drywall system in the market which is, has zero carbon footprint. This is the MVP what we have developed in the past six months. It's a one bedroom unit, single story, good for a family of four. We can assemble this unit within two weeks and the cost to the consumer would be around $10,000, excluding taxes and logistics. So to start with, it's a B2B model. Our paying customers would be architects, distributors, developers, and governments. They will be taking the projects from us. And but our end consumers are people who cannot afford a home, like slum dwellers, underserved community, basically a common man. So, and globally, as I've mentioned, 1.2 billion people are suffering from housing affordability crisis. And this number would go to 1.6 billion by 2025. If we talk about the European market, the potential market is 219 million households, and we are looking to target 0.006% of that. We have some very big competitors. The biggest competitors are the, are the traditional building industry. But we have some direct competitors also, like shelter homes, container houses, those are like inhuman. And you can see we have a really unique market positioning, which is fast in construction, but low in cost. We have a scalable revenue model that will start from selling clean homes, in the next phase, we'll be going to B to C, then we'll be selling home as a service. We are a team of two architects and designers. We have over 10 years of industry experience. Uh, in the past 12 months, we have won uh, 13 major awards. Day before yesterday, we got the German Innovation Award. And we are looking to raise 1 million that we'll be using for our team expansion. And we are looking to pilot all across the Europe because we want to test our material in various weather conditions. Thank you so much.
Yeah, you, you finished very particularly on the point I was about to ask about, which was um, uh, sustainability in different weather conditions. So what sort of testing have you done? So we have done testings of strength uh, in various conditions. We have tested for minus 15 till plus 50. And we have done the test for the waterproofing, fireproofing. Because whenever you come to know this is paper, you will ask me two questions, water, water and fire. So we are treating the material with a special resin which will make it waterproof. And because the material, the sandwiching material itself has a fire rating of 40 minutes each. So the, uh, once the panel is packed, it is technically left with no, no air. So in case of fire, let's say there is 10% air left, the fire will reach till that point and it will stop. So, but to make it more fireproof, what we are doing is, fly ash is a byproduct of the building material industry. So we are buying the, we are taking the fly ash and we are filling the fly ash inside the core. So after every fourth panel, the fifth panel would be a fire rated panel that will prevent the spreading of fire. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I wonder what early traction have you received so far? So we already have five customers. We are at the pre-revenue stage. We are making portable toilets for the state government and we are making e-waste collection centers. We have done two houses, full houses, and we are looking to expand. Hi. Hi. Uh, you finished rather quickly, and I didn't fully hear what your ask was. Yes. Would you tell me yeah. again? So we are looking why? to raise one million. So that will, because we are a team of innovators. We do not have someone who can market it or sell it. So that will go for the uh, team expansion. And because, uh, because that's the first aspect, then because we have to buy a lot of, lot of raw material. So that's why we need, that. the other part of the money will go in buying the lot of raw material and expanding. Uh, internationally, because if you want to go to next countries, you need new level of certifications and regulations. Okay. And if I were to invest in that, what would I be getting back? So because uh, you are you're partnering in, in, in the organization as a, as a, as a you're part of the ecosystem, and because we are, we are talking to a lot of governments, so the larger social impact we'll be creating as a company will be huge. I must say, I liked your presentation again, and I liked the, the topic. But what surprised me a little bit is that you've got a lot of young, uh, pretty uh, smart-looking architects, and yet you design an, in a brand new product, and yet you designed a house that looks like a concrete house. Have you, have you any aspiration to make really interesting architectural statements with your material? Yes. So we have like two segments. So the, the segment what I'm, I'm proposing you is an affordable segment in which the look and feel of the shelter doesn't matter. All you need is a shelter which is permanent and which is useful. So we have a really niche segment which, in which that is uh, three times of the price of this material that we are using for green building materials that's flexible, you can do any shapes, anything you can do. So, but this is an affordable segment because we have five variants. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, can uh, Shiraj get himself mic'd up? Okay, excellent. Okay, and now to present Chinmaya Mahatna. Good morning, judges, mentors, and fellows. Myself, Chinmaya representing my venture Strothex. Imagine, suddenly the power of this building goes off and there is no backup. How challenging it is. In India, it happens very frequently. 60% of our population stay, stays in the remote areas. Fortunately, all of them are electrified, but unfortunately, only for the 20% time of the day. Why? Because they are getting electricity from a very larger distance produced by these huge power plants. And the utilities are hesitant to supply to the remote locations because there's a high transmission and distribution losses and these are the marginalized consumers. So our solutions is a miniaturized power plant that runs on solar energy. Our single plant can supply up to 25 houses in a remote part for 15 years and at a system cost of only 10,000 pounds. And the beauty is it is demand responsive for 24 into seven. 
we have our patented solar receiver that generates hot air up to 600 degrees Celsius using solar power. Then the, sun, then the ceramic blocks stores the heat energy. And a very compact Stirling engine that is designed for space application by NASA produces the electricity using this heat. We have our talented team who has been working in this project since last five months. So far, we have delivered the proof of concept successfully and right now, we are working on our first commercial pilot plant. Our work has been funded by Department of Science and Technology India, Venture Studio, and Government of Gujarat. We are awarded by the SMIT Climate Co-Lab, Singularity University, and COP21. So the cooperative organisms to, to whom we have already supplied our photovoltaic plants are the early adopters for us, then the non-profit organizations like NGOs who have been working in the remote areas will be the next followers and the distributed companies will play the role of the energy generators at the growth stage. There are 600,000 such remote areas in India, but our vision is to impact 100,000 lives by putting our 1,000 systems in the next 1,000 days. And it is quite doable. For that, we are looking for industries to build a very robust supply chain and academic partnership to carry out our further R&D activities. We are looking for 50,000 pounds to build our next five, up, next five pilot plants, and we are looking for a very good advisory board who can mentor us in both technical and business aspects. A very famous physicist of this British land once said, we built too many walls, but not enough bridges. Now let's bridge the remote areas by Strothex and build a very smart, empowering network. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's very impressive. I would like to know a little bit more about how the pilot program is going. Yeah, so we have tested in the, uh, the individual all three components of our, of our part, and we are right now building it at this exact scale of 8 kilowatt and our uh, on land. Okay, and when is it due to end? So uh, it will take uh, one more month to complete, I mean, to, to put the uh, electricity into the grid exactly. Yes, so we're on that part. Thanks, really, really great presentation. Um, could you expand a bit more on what differentiates your product from the rest of the market, what specific? Exactly, so I just uh, told about the photovoltaic is there. We also uh, do the photovoltaic installation, but it's not reliable as uh, it does not have the uh, uh, ability to store the energy. And if you are putting the storage as the electrical storage, it is very costly. So that pushes us to build this product because it is affordable. The thermal energy storage is quite cheaper. So uh, that's where we are uh, here. Yes. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit more about your ask? Yes. So uh, we are uh, right now, it's a small company. We have our uh, certain uh, uh, supply chain ready, but uh, to make it more robust and more, uh, we, we, we want to create more uh, options for our supply chain. So that, that's the first industry need we are looking for. And definitely to carry out our further R&D activities because there is uh, certain progressed uh, products that are in the pipeline. We want to carry uh, some research R&D works in collaboration with some institutions. And also, like I just uh, told you, 50,000 pounds to put the next five pilots. Yes. Thank you. Yes. As a technical question, how did you come to choose the Stirling engine as your uh, heat? Yes, so exactly. So it's one of the highest efficient engine available, and it's a very compact one, and it does not require any, uh, like the Rankine cycles, it doesn't require any steam or anything, it's just based out of the air part. So we are basically heating the hot air, as I said, and it is capable to run that engine, and it's a very high temperature engine that gives us the efficiency up to 35%. But I mean, a space device, it's gonna, yeah. not going to be cheap. Exactly, but uh, you know, uh, it, the the space when it, it it is it is built for the space it works in this 12 sigma range but for our case it's fine we we are we are built one engine that is at the cost of 3000 pounds and uh, it works fine and and it exactly lies in our our skill uh, in in this economics part thank you. yes yeah. thank you Fantastic. Our judges are still <coughs> nicely to time, so thank you for that. We're making good progress. Okay, so can uh, Gunjan uh, get himself mic'd up, please, for the <coughs> presentation? Excellent, good. And uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Shiraj Kapil to the stage, please. Thank you. It's whenever you say. Okay. 
Hello everyone, my name is Chirag and I'm the founder of LEAF. We at LEAF make you hear the world differently and safely. I want you to imagine as this guy standing in front of all these speakers blaring a lot of audio inside your ears. What would you feel? Bad, right? Did you know, guys, that one billion people in the world suffer from hearing loss damage? Are any of you above 22? Well, it's already started. <laughs> You all have your fingerprints. You all have your eye prints. What we at LEAF do is we create your ear prints. Every one of you has a unique ear. As you can see, when you're born as babies, your ear is perfectly balanced. But as you grow for the same age of users, the ear profile is very, very different. We at LEAF, with our deep sound engine, try to create a custom ear profile for you with our software technology and we sell hardware as well. And because of this ear profile, you hear all sounds perfectly tuned and fine and safe for you. As you can see, we put in different frequencies of sounds inside your ear. It's like a short test of one minute. And once that is completed, your ear profile is good to go. So we have created your ear print. Our target user are all the youth between 18 to 30 age year, age year old, and there are approximately 135 million people in India as well as the UK in this bracket. This is our journey so far. We started in 2016 where we raised a quarter of a million dollars for seed fund. In 2017, we made our first sale, and by December 2018, we are grossing more than, more than $300,000 monthly for our sale of products. We are 18 months old with 100,000 customers, 75% gross margin business, and a core team of only 15 members. This is our competitive landscape. As you can see, our competitors over there are extremely high priced, between $400 to $500. However, uh, they are just one product and have a closed ecosystem. For us, we are more than 17 products in the market. Uh, our price range is between $10 to $100, and our, we have an open ecosystem. What it means is if you have a JBL earphone, it still works with it. So our technology uh, we created in 2018, we scaled to a lot of products. In 19, we are developing our engine, expanding to Europe and USA, and in future, going into performance enhancement using our technology, and sleep enhancement and memory enhancement. My name is Chirag Kapil. I was awarded as the most promising young entrepreneur in 2015. I'm an acoustics and sound engineer. And we also won the $1 million X Prize in 2018. Uh, this is our uh, advisor, Peter S. Diamandis, who's from Silicon Valley. We, are, we have been published in more than 700 news articles and videos and won more than international, 18 international awards. Why don't you come and join us in our journey to create the safer world for everyone? We are raising $3 million uh, and completing our stage round of Series A. We are also looking for partners to build a base in UK. So I welcome you all to join my journey. Thank you. As someone who's rapidly going deaf in her left ear, um, and not because of listening to too much loud music, honest, um, you were very specific about your target as being the young. Yep. Um, do you have any reason for not approaching target audience like myself? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so the reason is that uh, a lot of our product sales, as, as you can see right now, this, uh, young are getting targeted to it because um, it's basically the youth where everything of this, where a lot of ear damage starts. So at a very young age, you start to get damage as above 22 years old. So progressively, our target segment right now is that youth because they have the purchasing power. As far as the uh, older population is concerned, we are developing different kinds of products. Not a very uh, funky audio kind of products, but a more sober kind of products, which are our next pipeline, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just a different segment. <laughs> yeah. Hi, thanks. Great presentation. Uh, very interesting. Um, I wonder uh, what IP do you hold and uh, how, how you protect yeah. it? So we have right now copyright, copyrights for uh, software technology. As far as the sound engine, which is the technology which creates your ear print and the customized profile, we have patents. We have applied patents for that. So that's our goal, IP. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so your ask is the three million. Yes. Um, and what would you actually do with that three million? Over what time period? So it, we are planning for over a time period of 12 months. Our main usage of funds is into the R&D and development of our next generation of uh, AI 
for performance enhancement using the, once we have created your custom sound profile, we can provide you much more use, uh, like deep sleep enhancement, uh, for athletics uh, performance enhancement, for students memory enhancement. So that is the kind of diversification in digital services we are looking at. And for that we need money and uh, for R&D. Can, can you just explain a little bit more about in athletics, the performance enhancement yes. from the ear print? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so in athletics, uh, all these sports people listen to music while they when they perform and do their gym or exercises, right? There are certain kinds of sounds which can improve your performance in terms of concentration and focus. So that's, that's the technology that we are working on now, which is in our R&D. I'm interested in the diversification mm. after the fact. So how unique is the ear print? Every single person has a unique ear print, uh, depending on the kind of sound frequencies. So we, it's like a 12-band sound frequency which we play, and that creates a graph for you. And so is this another kind of biosecurity that you can think of adding to? Probably, probably later. But right now we are not focusing on the security aspect of it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Perfect. OK, thank you. OK, we have three more pitches uh, before we take a short break for coffee. So let's get Himat uh, mic'd up, ready for the next one. And whilst he's doing that, please welcome Gunjan Patel. Let me walk like this. And if you are imagining a doctor and you have to analyze my gait, how would you have done analyze the gait? So in India, 32.5 million people, diagnosed people suffering with orthopedic and neurological disorders. And in India, doctors are doing get analysis by visual. It's a subjective and based on clinical experience and judgment. And there are only 15 to 20 instrument get lab available in India. In fact, the same problem I figured out in UK also. I had a few clinicians, and they also have the same problem in UK. Get analysis is an important clinical for doctors to study how the body moves, plan treatment accordingly, and provide effective treatment in rehabilitation and sports. The similar problem they also have in a sports when they have trained the player on a field. Now let me introduce iSense. It's a variable, portable get analysis systems. We also have our proprietary machine learning artificial platform, which provides the more than 25 key parameters of joint kinematics data. Unlike other competitors, our value proposition is scientifically validated, accuracy 90 percentage, is a faster, it saves time. Doctors can done a complete study 10 to 15 minutes, and the cost for one test is five to ten dollar. And it's customizable, improve the patient performance of 50 to 70 percentage. Our business model is direct sales to hospitals, sports clinics, and academic centers, and also the paper use per test, the charging for the per test for per gate analysis. And here in UK, in the last two weeks, I made a uh, visited for this clinic. One of the pediatrics is also interested, and they're doing a subject analysis. So they are interested for helping us to take the product and validation. At the same time, I also visited a Lancaster football club team, and head of the physio also interested to partner to take the, this product in a sports segments, so they can train the football players in effectively. We have won the various prizes and awards for these innovations in various forums. And we have equity free grants to develop our prototype and next phase of prototype to the pre-commercial stage. We are a team of business, technical skill, and doctors as advisory and industry consultants. In India, we partner with Ames, New Delhi, and CMC Valor and other hospitals or the private clinics. And UK also we are partnering with football club Lancaster City. And we are looking forward to mentoring in sports and healthcare within the UK market. And to raise the fund, $75,000 for manufacturing and material and UK regulatory path if you are to enter in the UK market. Thank you. Hi. While there are maybe not so many gate labs around, it is a very competitive space. I know that. So what are the protections around your intellectual property? It's a good question. So in our device, they do our video analysis. 
So we do have wearable sensors just to strap on a body and walk it. But the, our competitors this is the collect the data of the kinematics and they report to the doctor. What we are doing is we collect the data, we have an artificial algorithm, it will give you the prediction of the best optimal treatment and also same time it will help you as an end user of the patient how they can minimize the reduce of the risk by using looking up their gates. So they know if they're not walking properly and with the data they can help to understand how you can walk and improve their walking pattern. Hi, thanks. Um, so following up on the previous question as well, I'm just interested, you mentioned at the end uh, of the presentation that 75,000 uh, yeah. investment would be used for UK regulatory. So have you done any uh, exploration in terms of what that would involve and what challenges you would see uh, in the UK uh, from the regulatory point of view? So the regulatory point of view, we just have to do a clinical trials in hospitals, and we have to show the data and the accuracy to prove the device same as the industry gold standards. So doing that process, we need a fund to and partner with the academic or in a hospital institute to the complete trial, and that data will have to submit to the regulatory to get the clearance certificate to selling the product in the market. What sort of feedback have you had from the users um, of your device? Have you, um, I mean, have you analyzed that? Are they involved in the development of it? Yeah, so we have done uh, two pilot trials in hospital with the under observation of the doctors and clinicians. And we have collected a 45 samples data, and the data we analyze and we compare with the motion camera systems, putting at the same time the marker system, which is called a Vicon system, and again, the our device strapped on a body. And users' feedback, if, because we have to done a one guest study with the video analysis, I have done myself, took three hours for one test. But with this done, just, just plug and play, easy to use, tap it on a body, walk it, collect the data within 15 minutes. It's fantastic, they give a very good, impression that, and they can walk like normally. They don't have to look anywhere with a camera somewhere. If they drop the, any marker, data is lost. So with advantage with our devices, there is no marker fall down, nothing, just strap on a body, walk it, collect the data. So this simple way to collect the data. This question might seem odd, but you're obviously driving this from a medical point of view. Yes. Uh, on human beings. Yes. And there, the regulatory environment yes. is very difficult. Yeah. Have you thought of applying your technology to, say, horses or, or racing dogs, where the regulations are a lot, a lot easier in what you do and the prices can be very high? So thanks, thanks for your question. Uh, so far, I have thought for healthcare, and now I'm focusing for a sports market also, the similar way they're doing for But I have not thought about the horses. So I will consider your input and, and, <laughs> and, I, I, and I will see how we can go to that market. Oh, I have no connections. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And, and, uh, Thank you, Gunjan. Thank you. Okay, can I call to get mic'd up Narai Narayan? Okay, and taking his place on the stand today, uh, Himat Singh to present to you. Yeah, good morning everyone. My name is Himat, I am from India. So as we know that the world is now thinking about global warming, it's a very high level. So there are a lot of options we already got, how to solve this problem of global warming and this carbon footprint, everything. So in the power sector, we are having a lot of options in solar, wind and everything. So here we are solving a very core problem in the solar PV industry, which is the blockage of the PV panels by dust, pollen or sand. So that reduces the efficiency of panels by a certain amount. Here we can take, for example, if panels are not clean for a week, then it can, losses can be about 5%. If it's not clean for a month, losses can be up to 35%. And with the existing solution, which are enhancing the problem. So what they are doing, they are cleaning with the labor and water. If water is not properly treated, then it can create a calcium streak on that, and that can kill the panel ultimately. It is causing around 72,000 units per megawatt per year in the soiling losses. That is too huge. So the scale of the problem we can see by the graph, the gap between the generated power and the installed power. So that is the, due to the different factors, and soiling is one of them. So in this term, in the solution and the problem, now we are having two choices. What should we choose, the water or the energy? Both are essential, I think. So here is our solution. So we are taking care of both the things, energy and water. 
our solution is the electromechanical device. It's a combination of the airflow, airflow and the mechanical rotating device, which clean the panels automatically. And uh, so it is totally service effective for the plants. It's waterless, first of all. It is cost effective for the plants. It is energy independent, and it's having long surface life to serve them. So the market opportunity in front of is very huge. Globally, the solar PV market is around 300 gigawatt plus. In terms of monetary value, we can say it's 1.2 billion pound per year. So there are some competitions in the, in the market. These are the conventional solutions, manual solutions, and there are some automatic solutions even. So we are better than our competitions in terms of product, the cost, quality, and the services. So there are some achievements we have received yet. So we already raised some equity funding. We have raised uh, some grants. We, have, we already have two letter of intents from the customers. We have done our pilot project in the starting. And now we are going for, again, the bigger pilot in the next month. So here, we are looking for the global partnerships in terms of the suppliers, advisory board, in terms of the new customer base in the Middle East and other South African countries. So we have our timeline for the next uh, three years. So we are going to achieve around like 5,000 megawatt uh, installation we will do by 2022. So here we are having our proud team, which is a combination of the interdisciplinary uh, skills. Yeah, thank you. So at Photom Technology, we are looking for like that, let's keep the sun shining. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have lots of questions, so I'm going to stick to just one. Sure. Um, I'm interested in how the technology works in different conditions, yeah. considering the fact that solar <laughs> is established in different conditions. Exactly. Is it equally effective everywhere, or exactly. how it works? Uh, it, it's not equally everywhere, because it depends on the dust condition, how dust conditions are. So right now, the dry, dry cleaning system we have made yet, it is working for the sands and non cohesive soils, which are not sticky to the panels. If dust is sticky to there, then we need to use some wet, wet cleaning system. So already we have tested that thing even, for different geography, for different sand and dust conditions. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks, very interesting. Uh, I'm interested to hear more about the marketing plan. So how do you plan to market yes. the, the solution? So, uh, so the solution we will sell, this product we will sell to the big companies who are owner of the solar power plants. So it's a B2B thing, everything's like B2B. So we can fill the tender for some companies. Already we have two laptop intent from the big companies in India. So they are having around, uh, more than five megawatt portfolio in them, solar. So directly we are going and talking to them, B2B contact we are doing. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about the, the manufacturing of the technology? Um, um, <coughs> Is it something that you're doing yourself, or is it something that you're... you're so, uh, yeah, I will talk about this. So here we are doing outsourcing of different components. So there are some custom components in the system, and there are some standard components, like the electronic parts, sensors are there, and we are making oil on PCB. We are making some custom me mechanical parts even. So in-house, we are doing our assembly only. It's outsourcing for different parts, and then in-house assembly. Yeah, thank you. Yours is one of those presentations where until you mentioned it, I never thought of the problem. Oh, okay. thank you. So you've clearly articulated the problem and then given a wonderful solution. My problem is that once everybody sees it, they could just go and do it, it looks like. Yeah. So what stop, uh, you, uh, how will you cope with that? Uh, so first of all, I won't talk about the patent and that thing. But everyone can file patent even. I have patent already. So we have patent for this. Other thing that is about how fast we go. Hard. It's about how fast we go. That's a good answer. I think it's how fast you go. Yeah. Myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Himat. Okay, and our final presenter uh, for the first slot this morning, I'd like to welcome Narayan Lal Gujar. Good morning. I am Narayan Lal Gujar, founder of EF Polymer Private Limited from India. When we talk about agriculture, the major problem is water. In India, 60% of population are affected through drought. And in India, 266 districts and 8 states are drought affected. In many years, farmers will be suicide due to unavailability of water. So, 
we make a water retention fertilizer for solve this problem using bio waste we we throw this in anywhere so using this banana peels and orange peels make this problem so we solve one problem to another problem solve waste to best so what is you do the over product is a orange high retention capacity if suppose i give you example a plant require 10 liter of water but if you use over product the plant require only 2 liter of water so you can save 8 liter of water per plant so you can save lot of water by this product and also this is organic biodegradable and chemical free so this is a good for all farmers and this is a cost is a very less so poor farmers is easily afford this next so this is a social and economical impact in the farmer this is an example in india is a barren land and when you use last year this convert into productive land so where is the so our aim ki we convert barren land into productive land by using this product so this is a huge social impact and economical impact in the country and different part so what is the vra different from other market product so first is our product is a no chemical use this is a highest growth 100 per biodegradable this cost is only three dollar per kg as compared to other market project this is a your usp and the great key if you use chemical that's convert into barren but over productive use this convert barren into productive land so this is a great advantage of this product and next thing what will be do we have a student startup and in last six months we have revenue got a thirty five thousand dollar order from rajasthan government and we have also pending order formulates and we have a 5000 kg order deliver and also we got a best innovation award from president of india and we have also international order next this is a manual production of our team now we have a, a student so we manually product this so this is our team from college of technology engineering T india and we have all wants is making this happen and what we want now we have a manually production so we want to we solve all other country problem other state problem so we need a more production capacity because we have a order but we need a more collaboration more mentoring support so we need if we get a eighty thousand dollar and some mentoring support so we can fast over production capacity and increase production thank you thank you and now you can see this is over 10 gram of a solution hold all this water you can thank you very much i I'm, I'm interested in particular as you grow in terms of access to your food waste um the particular the orange peel and the bananas what's your supply chain yes so and now in india we from collect raw material from juice industries and now we're seeking the juice industry like uh, making a fanta this type of a juice industry which making orange juice and the chips the many industry making chips so we are collaborate with and we want to they using this using over their waste and convert into so now we trying to reach them now we have convert mandi waste in rajasthan and in the many uh, state the agriculture waste like orange and banana peel in mandi and other juice industry so now we collect in now in week we collect uh, 3000 kg waste uh, collect waste uh, in a per day from one city so if we collaborate in a more city then we easily uh, collect and then is process and then go into market thanks thanks very interesting i just tried as well to look in right <laughs> interesting <laughs> thanks um just maybe uh, i'd like to get to know more about what motivated you to start the the world project and what's what's the motivation behind yes so i belong to farmer family and my when i am in 11th class so when in the sea in rajasthan is the drought affected area if you see in india rajasthan is a drought affected area. so uh, i am interested in a science fair, fair and science project in 10th class to end so my far my father say me that uh, we are uh, facing this problem because our crop will be burn due to the unavailability of water and the our main income source will be crop so my father motivate why you are doing uh, other things you can solve himself problem so on that day decide ki i make this problem my profession and that's i start on this thinking and 
three years, I regular testing in a Jugard method, like use this in a field, and I know uh, support, no nothing uh, technology I know because in 11th class, but just doing a trial, hit and trial, hit and trial, and got a success in last three years. After three years, I got a, a good support from college uh, mentor, and they give a technical details, and they validate through, yes, this is working. And then I got um, some award for this work because this, uh, when I give this in my use my field, the other pharmacy, oh, this is working. And this, this, uh, so this change will be arise here. So every farmer will be happy and convert. And so now we give example uh, in a. Uh, Rajasthan one farmer family have only grow uh, in one bigger uh, Loki in one bigger area Loki due to unavailability water. But when, uh, he called me ki when we are using your product. Now we are uh, produce in a two or three bigger uh, uh, in two or three uh, bigger over your product and we get a more profit from using your product so poor farmer will be happy and they give you a positive feedback and now we have a get a more of uh, return order from the local farmer you can see and due to unavailability of a production we have only limited because now I'm a college so with college study and this I'm trying to do this so thank you very <laughs> What um what What do you think are the challenges in automating the production? Yes. So I'm thinking just firstly uh, and in manual production, suppose we now we have a you know contract based doing this thing. Suppose we require a grinding this. So firstly, it's good drying this. For drying, we require a solar dryer. So now we're doing this in a manual process, in a, a sunlight process. But when we go automated machine, we need a, a automated solar plant which in presence of a solar light. Suppose uh, this uh, work on all time because we need a sunlight to dry. Uh, on um, oven dry is not working for this making this product. So we need so some this this challenge will be arise uh, and second thing we machine automated machinery we need uh, uh, a better place where we easily got all the raw materials also we face in some raw material we get the, because the, when we automated this the production capacity is very high so how to collect all this raw material so this problem also will be faced in future if so for this uh, in some challenges face in automated I don't get a question now thank okay. you very much Good morning, everyone. Healthcare is a human right, and we believe that everyone should have equal access to proper healthcare supplies. I am Nishant, and I'm building a network of drones for last mile healthcare logistics. About 8 million people are dying globally because they don't have the access to proper healthcare supplies. Rural communities lack reliable road infrastructure, sparse densities increase the cost of such deliveries, and the rural growth has been limited because of all of this. If we just talk about the scenario in India, then about 71% population live in rural areas. That's about 244 million people. And the nearest distance for them to, the, to an all-weather road is about two kilometer. Well, we have come up with a solution. We want to create a network of drones to connect rural communities to the most optimized healthcare facilities. And we want to do that by doing indi individual package delivery in under $0.5 per kilometer. Now, this will allow rural goods to reach urban markets, and the reverse logistics will allow further development of the rural communities at a faster rate. This is a patent-pending drone technology. We have created a drone with the capabilities of both a helicopter and a conventional plane combined. So it doesn't require any additional infrastructure. It doesn't require you to create something extraordinary for this. You can directly implement that in the rural segment, have it in a hub and a spoke model, and it will be able to carry your packages to the nearest station. We aim to create a drone-based supply chain system by operating in a hub and a spoke model and delivering medical supplies for you. If we just start talk about the drone logistic market size, then Gartner predicts that the last mile courier market is about $272 billion. And by 2022, the drone-based logistic market will be about $11 billion. Various targets only healthcare logistics that's going to be about $2.5 billion globally. 
if we just talk about the various market size that could be combined when this system is online, it's going to be medical supplies, the e-commerce goods, spare parts, and urgent documents. Talking about the business plan, then all the customers that we have includes the hospitals, the e-commerce player, the blood banks, the NGOs, and the government bodies. All the people that I've used the logo for, they're already the people that we are talking to and they have partnered with us. We have one paying customer right now and 10 different LOIs from different companies all around the globe. The revenue model is divided into three different segments. We have subscription-based model for B2B players, per-flight model for consumers, and insuring goods while we are uh, uh, transporting them. The already market that has been set up by four different players that are working in the global level, mostly in Africa, Zipline and Metalant are working in delivering blood samples. Flirty and JD comes from an e-commerce space. Well, this is a team, this is a well amalgamated team of tech entrepreneurs and business people. We have got the ex-CEO of DHL on board. We have got the uh, general director of GE Aviation Middle East, uh, Airbus, and uh, GlobeMD. Right now, we are looking to raise about $500,000. And 60% of that will go into the manufacturing of our technology and 40% in running the pilots. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm interested in the likely impact of regulations right. around drones. If right. you tell me a little bit about that in sure. India, sure. maybe wider. Sure. So India has opened its regulatory space for drones that can be used in aerial and photography. And now they're launching their, their two, uh, drone 2.0 scheme that's going to open the space for delivery drones. And that's going to come in April, 2000, uh, April, April 2019, this year only. So delivery drone will get legalized by April. And this is where we want to start our commercial applications. We have already done a few of our pilots with different players. But we have not got any payment for that right now. Yeah. Thanks. This is very interesting, actually. The question I wanted to ask as well, it, it was related with the regulation, sure. especially in the um, environments right, right now, when many questions arise about right. you know, Heathrow questions right. and so on. So the question was, uh, have you thought about some of the barriers of entry into right. commercial drugs right. Right. in India and afterwards? How will you scale up that? Right, true. Right. So the thing is, uh, regulation is the biggest hurdle that they'll need to address if you want to you know, operate in any country. So right now, Africa has completely open space. But now, India and US are moving towards uh, having drones in application for deliveries. So that's one thing. The second, defensibility will come into place of geographic condition and the best suitable use cases that you can find to use these drones. I mean, initially, no one is going to start drone deliveries in the urban areas. You have proper infrastructure to do that. But if we just talk about the rural segment and the remotest of the areas, there's one pilot that we are doing with West Bengal that's 40 islands in Sundarbans, and they don't have any connectivity apart from a boat that's been manually operated. So we want to have this logistics unit from one side of the bank, river bank, to the other side and transport goods over that. So these small use cases will start, initiate the whole implementation of this thing. And as the system becomes more, uh, more rigid, it, it can be implemented in the, in the urban areas as well. Hi, thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, can you tell me about um, what evidence you've got that there is, in fact, a demand for this service, right. particularly in these regional right. areas that you're talking about? Right. So, uh, so we begin by talking to people who are doing their service in the rural areas, healthcare services, and we wanted to understand their pain problem in that. So right now, the last mail supply chain is kind of broken. And if we just talk about the rural segment, then they have primary healthcare facilities located over there. And the most optimized labs are something so somewhere far apart from that. So if you need to run a test or something, you require at least two day time in order to get the result back. So that was one thing that we did with the diagnostic chain. And then we went ahead and you know, we talked to different players. Then we realized that right now they, are, they, are, they, are, uh, uh, they, invent, they have an inventory where they, they take in products, and they don't exactly know when the product will actually be used. So they, they would like to you know, uh, 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 decrease the inventory and have uh, the, the product supplied on a per delivery basis rather than stocking them at a single place. So, so, so these are all the use cases that we got from these people. And then we came up with this model to basically supply them uh, just on a service basis on per demand. Yeah. I think it's an exciting prospect that you find a real uh, hard case for, this, for, this, uh, for drone delivery. Okay. My question really is, why design your own drone? Right. Particularly when you're thinking of crossing a river. Sure. 
Sure. So the thing is that, uh, so drones right now, the major advancement has gotten into the surveillance and videography space. The, the drones have become really sophisticated. You can get amazing footage with that. But if you're talking about drones that can carry payload and you know cargo-based drones, it's something that still uh, needs techno technological development. If, if you want a drone to you know, go 100 kilometers and get your product safely there, you need a complete you know, communication package or system in place and things like that. So that is something that still need to get improved in the technological aspect. Right, right, that, that's true. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, could I call Shashi Kunt up to get microphone up? Okay, and I'd like to welcome our next presenter, Dr. Pankaj Parasha. Can I have the ticker? Hello, good morning. Do you know that in India, more than 25 million people who are suffering from diabetes also suffer from diabetic kidney diseases? And the worst part, they do not know about that. There are more, hundred, more than 317 million people in India who are vulnerable to chronic kidney disease. Well, I'm Dr. Pankaj Parashar. I'm from India. I'm a doctor. Let me talk about my innovation, innovative solutions to these problems. How do we manage today? The 29% of the population of India that lives in cities has an access to the state-of-the-art pathology labs with auto-analyzers, which are very accurate but costly. Whereas the rest of the 71% of the population that makes to around 1 billion people do not have an access to these pathology labs. They are all left with these low accuracy, high threshold of detection, urine dipsticks, with which they dip the uh, test strip in the urine and get the tests done. They just give it an indication. Because of this, we have that huge number of patients with us. We come up with a great solution. This is uh, Centiglo. It's a point of care diagnostic device. It's in the form of a kit, a portable kit, where you just have to use patient's urine in this and a proprietary reagent and can get accurate, reliable results within seconds, which are great for screening, monitoring, and diagnosis. We have performed a few clinical trials and have got an accuracy of around 92% uh, compared to the strips where they were around 64% of accuracy. Uh, we are a great team of innovators, engineers, and technologists. We have a great group of mentors from academia industry. We have an ex-CEO of Siemens Healthcare on board as an advisor. Uh, if we compare the existing technologies, uh, the auto-analyzer, the strips, and our device, we stand apart by being very economic. Uh, a, a test costs around 40 pence on our device compared to six pounds in the market. And we are, uh, we are accurate and are portable. Uh, we, this is a patent pending technology in India, and we have a few grants from various organizations. We are about to launch the product into the Indian market, we are waiting for the regulatory clearances, and we have more than 12 national level awards, and we are negotiating with the government of MP for a rollout in the next year. What we are asking here is, apart from the human market, we are also looking for a $7 billion pet care market in the UK, where more than 500,000 pets are suffering from diabetes and kidney diseases. For that, we need mentorship, collaboration to get into the market, and 100,000 to 200,000 pounds to start the UK project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I am interested in the intellectual property position on this one in that there is competition out there. So yes. I'd like to know more about that. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is a patent pending technology in India right now. Uh, the other technologies that are available are all strip based. There are many point of care diagnostic devices which use these conventional strips that I showed here. These ones. Here they are only given indication. You have to dip it in the urine, make a color change, and that intensity of color gives the appropriate, approximate inter, uh, condition of the disease. They have a very high threshold of detection. These start detecting at around 30 milligrams of proteins in urine, whereas the clinically significant range starts from 2 milligrams to 20 milligrams. 
whereas our technology does at a very low cost the same thing that's 2 milligrams to 20 milligrams. There are strips from the example, I just give an example from Roche, they are called as Micral strips. Uh, they are very costly, but also detect from 2 milligrams to 20 milligrams. We have an advantage that uh, we have if we don't have the inherent inaccuracies of the strips, they are sta our reagent is stable in the cold and hot climates across the world, and the device is very accurate in reading the uh, results. We have uh, put in around eight to nine months just to fine tune the uh, algorithms in the hardware and, soft uh, and the software. Hi, thanks. Great presentation. Uh, I wonder, you mentioned that uh, in your ask that you would need uh, 100 to 200,000 for expansion in the UK. What are you planning to use that money for? Uh, right now, uh, when I reached here, this was an opportunity. It's a op new opening avenue for us. My mentor, David, helped us to that this could be an opportunity because it's a low-hanging fruit. It does not have that many regulatory requirements as the human healthcare market needs. And once we have to get into the human healthcare market, it needs some time for us. And this would help us bridge that gap from, uh, from a startup initial stage, setting up our uh, foot outside India and getting someplace to... Uh, get into the European and the other parts of the world. So this could be a great opportunity. We are still working. We'll have to work on this, uh, uh, how we'll be spending the amount here. Because we have a product ready. We just need to fine tune it according to the needs of the pet industry. And that's what I then, if we can get a place to start, we can start selling within six months in the pet market here in, in, in England. What I'd like to know is, how important, how significant are the advantages of your product over what already exists at the moment? I think that's a very important question. Uh, I'll just give an example that when we have a condition called as protein urea, that is around when you get a strip positive with proteins in urine, uh, I'll just give you a small example. When the a patient is diagnosed with diabetes, within three to five years of the disease course, pa patients start developing small damages in the kidney, micro damages, with which proteins start leaking out in small quantities. That is five to 10 years. After that, three to five years. Next five to 10 years, they convert into frank proteinuria. Those damages have already damaged the kidney so much that the disease has set in. And if we can make a, make, uh, can diagnose the disease in that microalbuminuria stage or microproteinuria stage, we can have a reversed changes and can save the kidneys just by adding one single medication added to the patient's diabetic uh, regime. So that is the difference. If you don't get to know that early, patients end up into end-stage kidney diseases. We have, I think, the second largest or the largest population patients waiting for dialysis. We have every year, we need 34 million sessions of dialysis every year. Just one last question. Sure. How many pet owners in the UK already use strips? Uh, this is just, uh, an, uh, uh, I'm just trying to look into that. I've been made, I'll be, I'm being made connected to the vets here so that I can more understand this market because uh, it was a, totally a new thing for me that uh, this could be an avenue for us. So I'm, be, I'm being honest, I don't know much about that. Still Thank working you. on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, could I ask uh, Siddhant to get mic'd up? Okay. Okay, and I'd like to welcome to the stage <coughs> Rashikant Bunwal. Good morning, everyone. I am Shashikant, co founder of Trailbit. I am very excited to present my company, Trailbit, to you. Do you know offline businesses and brands are spending annually $23 billion on hyperlocal marketing and $208 billion on TV ads? But still, they are struggling to hook their users when it matters most, when the users are at their venue or when they are watching their TV commercials. There are no effective way for them to connect with the users real time and send the right information digitally. Now think what retail stores, shopping malls, TV, or your smartphones share a common thing. They all have audio speakers. Actually, there are more number of speakers than people on Earth. 
and Trillbit can convert each of them into data transmitter. And then there are billions of smartphones which become data receiver for us. We embed information on inaudible sound waves and through these speakers deliver it to the smartphones without internet, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. With our technology, we are helping brands and businesses to identify the users' presence at their venue or identify when the users are watching their contents on TV or other media. And with that, we are enabling them to trigger certain actions on the user app or send the right information at the right time. Currently, we are selling our technology and software platform to the businesses, and we are making business on the basis of paper user or paper impressions. Talking about team, we all three co-founders graduated from the best engineering college in India. While Bhaskar and Mirgesh worked for more than five years in sound technology, I have experience in business development and operations. After making successful corporate career, we are running this company to create an impact the way physical businesses interact with their users. Our technical advisors are professors from MIT and UIUC who are world leader in sound communications. This is the current snapshot of our business. We are a team of a strong 12 people. We are generating monthly revenue of $7,000. We are working with major retailers and F&B brands in India. And currently, we are already live in more than 6 million devices. We already filed four patents in India and US. Talking about target of two years, we want to give our services to more than 200,000 locations and generate annual revenue worth of $10 million. Currently, we are looking to raise a fund of $1 million, mainly for the business development and sales in various markets. And also, we seek help of, help to connect with our potential clients in these markets. We are here to connect the world with sound, and you are welcome to support us and be part of this journey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very interesting. It's prompted lots and lots of questions in my head, so I will just go to the first one that came to mind, which was, what do you see as the challenges for uptake uh, along the entire chain, from yourselves to the individual? Yeah, so as of now, like, we are, we are actually selling this big, uh, solution to the businesses like retailers who has like chains of uh, retail stores. So mostly like our solution is limited to the application, mobile application. It works with the mobile apps. So our target users or clients are only the retailers or the businesses who have their own app. Then only our technology is getting integrated with them. The second challenge, what we are facing is it is completely B2B market. So it takes uh, like three to six months of timeline to convert a client uh, doing like pilot and then converting them and then start generating revenue for them. And also there are some initial uh, friction from the adoption point of view, because if you see everybody now like in retail talks about the omni-channel marketing and they have like website or apps, but offline experience are completely different from the digital experience what they are giving. Uh, di in digitally they are having only the e-commerce platform. So we we trying to bridge this gap where we are actually convincing the retailers that the same app actually people can use when they come to your offline store and get the correct information or relevant information. Thanks, lots of food for thoughts and very interesting presentation. Um, I wonder if you could expand a little bit on uh, what proof have you received so far that this is the right solution for retailers mm -hmm. and what feedback have you received from those that already used or trialed uh, the solution. Yeah, correct. So if you will see the, the competitive technology, especially in the retail, so Bluetooth Beacon is one competitive technology for us. In India, no major retailer or no shopping mall is using that because of two major reasons. One is there is initial deployment cost on the hardware side. They don't want to invest on that. Above that, there is also the management problem because Bluetooth beacons runs on battery, it gets consumed, and then you have to change it. And also, like when the shoppers are coming, mainly their Bluetooth is not on on the mobile, switched on on the mobile. So basically, a lot of people 
they cannot target because of that region. In our case, we consume like 100 or 200 percent less mobile battery as compared to Bluetooth, and we works perfectly. Even like app is not open, we actually recognize the user's presence and can send the app notification if required. Hi. Um, as I understand from your presentation, you um, you already have sales. Yeah. So can you give me a a brief example of how you have actually benefited a business. Yes, yes, sure. So basically, the, one of the biggest retail chain in India is called Future Group, which actually went live with our solution in one of their major app called Future Pay app. So now what's happening, like they have going for two, three major use cases. One is like, if any high valued customer is entering into their store, and if they have given the bad feedback last time, so they want, that notification to be sent to the store manager or the store people, and they, they come and then greet them and give the personalized experience. The second use case is they, uh, Future Pay is actually the wallet system for Future Group. So they want users to use the Future Wallet for the payment solution. So now if I can tell that, uh, tell Future Group or the client that user is already inside the store like within 30 minutes and he is approaching the POS, then they actually push notification very aptly saying that use the future pay wallet and then get some cash backs. And it is actually giving them advantage over other means of payment and then they are actually saving the transaction cost there. I think you've, you've had your time, so this has to be a very quick answer. <laughs> it's not fair. How do you, do you need a whole new regulatory environment so that the, the cause this like looks like subliminal communication that used to be used in, in visual. No, so if you will see, uh, Bluetooth beacon technology, it is already... Yeah, there's a lot of regulation around it. Yeah, so how we work is, uh, from the privacy point of view, we actually do not record any audible data. And also we give the, uh, take the consent of the user, like we are taking the microphone access to give you the experience and the relevant offers. And also on the UI itself, the user have options to switch on or switch off, so they, they can actually go with that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, uh, can Vikram uh, get mic'd up, please? Okay, and I'd like to welcome to give his presentation Siddhant Tarwarawala. Oh. Good morning, everybody. I'm sure in the coffee breaks, some of you might have used Lou, and the remaining are generating the, realizing the pressure of P which is getting developed. We are fortunate enough to have Lou's in the buildings, but what when we don't have a Lou? You got to P, but you just can't P because you don't have a Lou nearby. People, bedridden patients, they find difficult to access washrooms. People with fractures, lower mobility injuries. People when they go on beach, travel, Abroad, foreign countries, a washroom is still a problem. Music concerts, there are 10,000 people, but only 100 washrooms, long queues, unhygienic toilet. And beyond that, all the problems that people stay dehydrated so that they don't have a loo, which increases the probability of skin diseases, uh, digestion problems, kidney stones. What is the solution? Pea shoot, it is a simple pocket toilet which is made up of paper elements. It has a unisexual funnel on the top when you press it, it forms in vaginal shape. It can be used by male and female. As soon as you pee into it, the pee solidifies instantly within a few seconds. And then you have to fold it and dispose it. The bag is completely leak-proof, hygienic, and odorless. The paper quality is virgin high-quality paper, which can be then reused for recycled paper. And urine has a lot of urea, which is turned as a good nutrient for productivity. We want to turn this urea and use it for the productivity of plants and use it as a fertilizer return. Uh, we have done a market analysis in India, and we found that healthcare sector uh, was the most low-hanging fruit for us because people uh, either have uh, catheter bags, which are very invasive process, or uh, the urine bed pants and urinal pods, which have a dependency of caretakers, which uses lots of water to clean and sterilization and operational cost. Outdoor events like political events, music concerts, uh, people when they travel. Other marketers, uh, there is six out of 10 travelers in India urinate openly because there are no sanitation facilities. We want to get into this. 
Uh, January 2019, we have officially launched the project and we have sold 1,500 units uh, within the first month. Uh, February, uh, we have been approached by major distributor uh, in the healthcare industry uh, in India and we are in positive second meeting for the uh, distribution ship in India. Uh, till August, we want to boost the sales. Uh, September, we plan to enter foreign market. December, we want to bring all the product innovations which are simultaneously working on. And by 2020, we expect to become a global leader. Uh, we are looking for uh, 700,000 pounds approximately, from which 250,000 would be used for initial presence of the company uh, with all the regulatory uh, product appearances, and then 500,000 uh, to scale up. We have a team, we, have, we are lucky to get uh, Eric and Keith on the board. Uh, lastly, we don't want any individual to feel trouble free and helpless <laughs> as Vikram is feeling aware. <laughs> we we want to increase the bars of sanitation space and bring new standards in industry by using PSU. Thank you. I'm sure my fellow panelists have lots of questions. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with where do you see your, uh, your first market, the market most likely to engage, not country, but sector? Uh, in India, we started with healthcare market. Uh, in UK, uh, for the time uh, we had two weeks over here and a continuous engagement with the customers, we think festival market in UK is a more stronger market to enter rather than healthcare. I actually would like to touch on that aspect as well. Um, you mentioned potential second market segments, festivals, you mentioned political events, and I just wonder, well, typically the, uh, the activities related with, with the product, they're more associated with the private space. So how will you overcome the cultural barriers in, in terms of Absolutely. people so using the, that in, in festivals and political gatherings? Uh, so by the product innovations uh, which were lined up are something into the private spaces, uh, which we had worked with the patent attorneys and we couldn't reveal it, but yeah, that issue was being solved uh, through the next innovations which are aligned with the product itself. Hi. So, um, the first segment you're thinking about is the healthcare. In the Indian market. It, healthcare in the Indian market. Um, have you tested the product on potential users? Absolutely. What we have has done, been their feedback? We, we have done 500 testings be, before actually packaging and launching into the market. And in the healthcare in India, there are two current solutions when they are bedridden. Catheter bags, 30% uh, of the patients, even they don't need it, pay, doctors put it because they can't move. Second, urinal pots or bedpans, they are so unhygienic, so unhygienic, and there's so much amount of caretaker, dependability, uh, self-dignity and esteem of patient is relied on a caretaker, which they don't like, and they actually stay dehydrated because they don't want to use that bedpans and all that stuff. So that's why a healthcare market uh, is the more uh, low-hanging fruit for us, and then we'll gradually solve, as he rightly said, the privacy problem, cultural issues, social stigma, and we have a solution for all that as a part of our next product innovations, which we want to bring in by time. I know you don't want to talk about the technology of those second markets, but what's the business model? Do people buy the, the devices and keep them? No, uh, we, uh, the business model would be renting. Uh, we would rent them uh, the chambers, and then people would buy this, actually, so in bulk. So we provide that on rent, but we give a mass uh, production of this, like 10,000 for an event. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll take that. Lovely. Okay, can, can I ask Vimal to get himself mic'd up? Yes. I'd like to welcome to give his presentation Vikram Julecha. Thank you. Ooh. Now that you're relieved with Siddhan's presentation, I'm here to <laughs> hydrate you. <laughs> So here, whenever you want to drink a water in the parts of the world like London, New York, you feel safe enough that the water which is coming from the tap is good enough for you to drink and safety. But it's not the case in the other side of the world and the countries which we intend to expand our business like Africa. So here we are to inspire you with a new vision, with a new way of looking into water and see how we are changing the world by providing water purification as a service. So our IoT-enabled purifiers looks at the data of the water quality which is getting inside the machine and which is coming out, which helps us maintain the safety of every water drop which is consumed at the user location. But not just that, that because this also helps us in doing the remote maintenance of the asset. Here you see our device, 
uh, which, is in, which is installed at a user's location at absolute zero cost. We don't, we don't charge them in any installation fee or a deposit. We only charge them for every liter of water which is consumed by them, and you only buy credits online using any of the debit cards or credit cards. So for about one pound, you get water available for about one week for a family of four to five in India. So this is what our water purification as a service uh, concept is, where instead of you buying, having to buy a water purifier by your own, or buying those bottled waters on your own, here the machine gets installed and you just use it. So the user gets to see a lot of data about the water quality, what is happening. And so we have about 1,500 families who are seeing what is happening to their water on a daily basis. And we're looking to take this forward to a larger extent. Apart from winning an innovation award from the country, which is known for leading uh, innovations in water, that's Israel, and from our prime minister, gave us a big boost to take the concept to a next level. And getting a recognition from a, a leading research company uh, called Verify Markets, we got listed as one of the top 100 water purifier brands of the world. So you think of a name you know across countries like Japan, the leading nations. We are the 100 person on the list uh, for that survey which happened in the first one year of our business uh, operation started. So we hope that we get into the top 10 market by the end, by the time the survey ends in 2023. So we are a team of diverse uh, entrepreneurs who have come together to build this concept of water purification as a service. And here we are looking at more and more opportunities on how can we build a better vision for water, where we see that if you see this a membrane, what we have done, this is a modular membrane which comes in. So any new water technology which is being developed or which is not being commercialized yet can just be shipped to our user by just putting the new membrane into this machine. So this is a modular device where any new water tech can be installed, and it becomes a new machine altogether. Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the IP position? Uh, we are uh, zero on the IP. What we tried doing is uh, taking the business in a three-step, where we looked at creating the Uber model of water purifiers and then get this do-it-yourself way of doing the business. And third is the IP, which we look at designing new water membranes for future. So our IP, our, I would say our business secret lies in the way we have uh, designed our software, that the way we can track uh, what's happening to the device. Thanks, very interesting. Um, can you tell me a bit more about how do you uh, expect to get the first 100 customers? They own the and what would be that piece? So we have about 1,500 families using our solution right now in the city of Bangalore. And with this 1,500, we're able to generate 69,000 orders on our website. So our target for the next two quarters is to fulfill those orders. Can you tell me a little bit more about your ask? Our ask is, uh, we're looking at, so of course, uh, the technologies what we have used in terms of water filtration are the ones which have been there for the last 10, 15 years in the market. There was a reason that we wanted to use the existing technologies because the user acceptance uh, would have been a little faster because you're trying to introduce a new business model and putting a new technology at the same time. Imagine Tesla saying, we will charge you per kilometer. We didn't want it to take that approach. We said, let's have the user accept our model take the new water technologies which can reduce the reject water which is coming out from the machines, which can make energy efficient water purifiers, and then introduce them to a future model. So all we need to do is ship the new membrane, size it to this, and ship it to your house, and you change it by yourself, without even me having to send someone to your house to just do this. Um, thanks. It's, it's very interesting to see this uh, new business model, but and the title we have in front of us involves the IoT. Yeah. Do people need to be on the net to use your device? Uh, no, so every uh, device comes with an inbuilt GSM SIM card. So we get the data by default to our servers, but user uh, will have to go onto internet just to recharge the device. So for the number of water credits you want, you need to be on the net. But in the future, we are also looking at tying up with the local stores where you can walk into so the way you buy your prepaid uh, charge for your phone. They can go to the neighboring store where that ecosystem has grown up in India now that they can go to the neighboring hood store and then recharge by taking a scratch card. And is there any human danger of people saying, well, I've got it, and stretching it an extra point 
beyond where you, your filters are working? Uh, so uh, the moment the water credits are zero on the machine, the purifier stops dispensing water till you don't recharge. However, uh, we're creating a missed call alert that in case if you're not able to recharge for any whatsoever reason, we give a 20 liter credit to you, which gets deducted when you recharge next time. Thank you. Thank you. OK, can I call Christopher Picardo to come and get mic'd up? OK, now I have a big round of applause for our last presenter from India. Just go across. Just go across. Our last presenter from India, Vimal Govind. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Myself, I'm Vimal Govind MK. I'm from uh, Gen Robotic Innovations. So I'm here with a crazy idea of converting manholes to roboholes. So a few things about myself. I'm, I'm really crazy about technology from my childhood. So I even created an Iron Man suit when I was studying in my engineering college. So it's a bit news in India, so you Google about it. So I just want to bring that passion to help the society. So that's why I built Gen Robotic Innovation. So in my uh, nation, I normally see a backward community doing the sewer jobs, like entering into manhole and working them. So I thought of creating a technology solution for them to rehabilitate them to having a better life. So this was my vision, and that's why I started Gen Robotic Innovation. So why I choose this problem is because in India, 4.5 million scavengers are doing this job. And 22,000 people have died doing this job in India till 2013. And the new records say that in every five days, one person dying this job in India, even though there is a lot of legal jurisdiction are there. And that is because the technology in the sanitation space is less advanced compared to any other technologies. It's not just a problem of India. These are some accidents which is recorded all around the globe. You can see even in developed countries also the accidents are happen. And here is the solution. And we just understand why this problem is happening. And it's happening is because, you know, uh, the question is like why it is named manhole. The reason is that in manhole, human has to enter. That's why it's named like that, and it has steps, even right now, even in UK as well. So why it is like that is because in manhole, the work involved is required a lot of degree of flexibility, and that cannot be provided by a simple machine like a normal sucker or a mechanical grabber. It requires that human degree of flexibility, and it can be provided some, something like a robotic solution can match that. That's why we provided that. And it's a complete automation of the all the work that a human being does inside a manhole using a, a robotic solution. And this is the first time in the world kind of movement. We already implemented in 10 different states in India and uh, rehabilitated around 80 plus people uh, to operate this machinery. That, they, those are the people who normally do the scavenging work in India. So those are the same people who should be trained to operate these machineries. So, um, and the main advantage of this thing is the user interface is so advanced and very simple that even a simple child can operate this machine. So illiterate people like them can also use it. It's also an engineering. So because of that, we got the chance to meet our Honorable Prime Minister as well as UN General Secretary. So we presented our Bendigo 2.0. That's the current best-selling model in front of uh, them. The market is so advanced, it's 0.1 million robots required in India. And that is only 7% of the global market. And this is our revenue. We already created around 2.3 million revenue till 2019. Our pro first product is launched in 2018. So we are now selling, uh, we are in a model of selling, but we are trying to get into the service model. So for, for that, uh, my first ask is that um, I, I really need some huge investment to get into the service model. And this is my team that's behind uh, all this execution. And we have great people like Rajan and Google Vice President as an angel investor in our, uh, our uh, team. And these are some clients and some awards. And yes, we are building a new level of sanitation space. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. Um, particular question on that last point that you're looking to get into the service yes. market. What is, how? Uh, actually, in India, the requirement is so high. 
So even if we try to build it and sell it, it, it a lot of convincing has to happen because we need to give demo and it, the process is very slow. But the government and everybody is ready to give the service model. Like they are now employing, uh, uh, taking contractors and the contractor is employing manual lab labors. The government is directly not employing. So when we are telling like we use robotic technology only, we didn't use any human labor in that, then they will give the contractor. That's the way that's currently is working. So if you are going to sell the product, it will be a little risky for us and for the government as well but in the service the market is open like anything so that's why we want to shift into that and uh, for uh, we need a, we, our plan is to deploy around 10,000 machines within a five years of time and it's require a huge investment so what we are trying to do is like we take some serious funding and deploy some uh, robots in the market and use the income which is generating so normally uh, for 300 manhole cleaning the government is spending around uh, 1,500 uh, um, pounds every month so that is enough for us to continue the journey. Thanks for the presentation. Um, you mentioned that you're planning to expand to 10,000 machines yes. in the upcoming years. Um, how, I wonder how long does it take uh, for you to build the machine and what's the price per, per unit? Yeah. What do you think it could be reduced to? Uh, okay, so uh, right now we are building a little bit slow, like uh, 10 machines per month is our capacity right now. We can double it when we are having a double shift, so 20 machines per, uh, in, in our in-house in factory, but we have an out, some outsource, so the maximum capacity that can, be lift, that can lift in India with the current availability is 50 machines per month. But uh, for deploying this much machines, we have to go to China, like countries, and manufacture it in a bulk way, or in India also, there are some industrial area where we can collaborate with them to build that much machines. So that's the way we are going to build it. And right now we are selling at uh, a rate of 25,000 pounds. That's the average rate. And product varies from 18,000 pounds to 32,000 pounds. So it is like a one-time go where rehabilitation and the AMC and everything is coming in a package. Um, I understand from the presentation that um, you already have significant sales. Yes. And um, and also, it's it's profitable on yes, each unit. Yes, yes. So, what are you actually doing with the profit at the moment? We we are uh, the, the, there is a delay in the market, which normally takes like uh, around six months. Will take to get the payment in back to our company after the implementation. So, but also we are having a lot of uh, orders that has to fulfill. So, we cannot raise the production level like we, according to the order that we are getting. So that's why we are looking for another serious round of funding to expand into the next level. Because uh, the, it, 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 the revenue generation into the company is a little bit slow, rather than uh, the order that we are getting. I, I, I'd like to talk about the business model. Scavenging was in your title. Yes. And is scavenging still the business model? What Are you recovering what was in the drain to reuse or whatever? I've, I've seen sort of TV programs on gold recovery from the gold areas oh, okay. and so on, yeah. which I think that picture came yeah, from. Yeah. So, uh, is that key to your model? Are you just are you cleaning the the drains? Yes, there? we are actually cleaning the drains. That's our uh, business model. Right now, what is the major problem is like in India, millions of manholes are blocking every every time because all the uh, th there are a lot of uh, I mean system errors and a lot a lot of things are happening like that. So uh, normally humans are getting into because that is a complex task. So what we are trying to do is like we are converting that into robotics and using the same sewer worker to operate this machine. So we are not giving an un uh, creating an unemployment, rather we are rehabilitating them as well as solving the problem in a better way, a safer way. Okay. And then one last question in my mind. Can you deal with fatbergs? That seems to be our problem in drains. You know, people put, put wet, liquid fat down the drain and it sets. Yeah. Can your technology do Yes, that? that is the major part of it. Because normally sucking machines fails in, the, in that area. Because sucking machine is, uh, works fine with the, when the waste is normally liquid. Okay, so what, what happens is like in the sewer drains, the liquid will rise. It's only because of the blockage in solid blockage which is in the beneath. So our machine is mainly focusing on the solid uh, waste which is on the beneath and it unblocks the system. So the liquid will slowly I mean, uh, go through the system in a proper way. That's the way that is the sewer designed. I got one more ask that I forgot to ask is that I also looking for advices uh, to uh, help us in this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.